In this video, we'll have a look at the Gauss-Newton method. We will here see how the Gauss-Newton method can be applied to estimate the parameters of the same nonlinear regression model that we discussed in the video about nonlinear regression. Before you watch this video, I also recommend that you watch the video about Newton's method. Remember that the distance between a fitted curve and an observation is called a residual, or an error. The residuals are calculated by taking the observed values minus the fitted values, which are the corresponding values of the curve. Suppose that the observed y value of this observation is equal to 10, and that the value of the curve at the same x coordinate as the observation is equal to 8. Then the residual is equal to 2. Let's place the first residual here. Then we calculate the second residual in the same way. Note that this residual is negative because the data point is below the curve. Then we calculate the third residual and so forth. We then square the residuals so that we get the squared residuals. Then we sum the squared residuals so that we get the sum of the squared residuals, or the sum of the squared errors, SSE. The sum of the squared errors is calculated by the following equation, where we sum the squared errors, which are the differences between observed values and the fitted values according to the curve. If we go back to the example we discussed in the video about nonlinear regression, we know that the following parameter values of the function result in the lowest possible sum of squared error when we fit the following function to this data. By using these parameter values, the sum of the squared errors is equal to about 36. Suppose that we would reduce the value of k from 0 0.029 to 0 0.02. Then we see that the curve does no longer fit well with the data, because most data points are below the curve. The sum of the squared errors has now increased from 36 to 1531, simply because the data points are now much further away from the curve. Suppose that we instead would increase the value of k to 0 0.04. Then we see that most data points are now above the curve. The sum of the squared errors is equal to about 777. Let's say that we will plot how the sum of the squared errors changes as a function of k. We know that when k is equal to 0 0.02, the sum of the squared errors is 1531. When k is equal to 0 0.029, the sum of the squared errors is equal to 36. And when k is equal to 0 0.04, the sum of the squared errors is equal to 777. If we would generate a range of different values of k, and calculate the sum of the squared errors for each value of k, then we could generate the following curve. We see that the value of k that results in the lowest possible sum of squared errors is 0 0.029. We'll first see how Newton's method can find this value. This is the nonlinear function that we try to fit to the data. If we replace y hat by this function in the equation where we calculate the sum of the squared errors, we will get the following equation. As we saw in the previous video about Newton's method, by using the following formula we can find the minimum value of the function. This is the function that we try to minimize by changing the value of k. We will therefore update the value of k in every iteration, based on the first derivative of this function with respect to k, and the second derivative of this function with respect to k. If we differentiate this function with respect to k by using the chain rule, we'll get this equation, and if we differentiate this equation with respect to k by using the product rule, we'll obtain this equation which is the second derivative with respect to k. We now have everything we need to find the value of k that results in the minimum value of the SSE function. 
Note that it is also possible to calculate the derivatives numerically, as we discussed in the video about gradient descent. To implement Newton's method in R, we can begin to set up the data like this. We then fix the value of y0 to 146, since we will only estimate k in this example. As a reference, we here use the NLS function in R, which uses the Gauss-Newton method. We see that k has been estimated to 0 0.0291008, which is the value that results in the lowest possible sum of square residuals. To run Newton's method, we plug in the first and the second derivative of the function for the sum of the squared errors with respect to k. We start at this point on the curve. Then we iterate, where we update the value of k according to the formula. As long as the absolute difference between the new and the old value of k is greater than 0 0.000001, and as long as the counter i is less than 1000, which means that we will not iterate more than 1000 times. If we run Newton's method, we see that we obtain the exact same estimated value of k as the NLS function, after only 9 iterations. Suppose that we now also would like to estimate the parameter y0, which means that we will search for the minimum in a three-dimensional space like this. This simple equation will now be expanded, so that we estimate two parameters, where the second derivative now corresponds to the Hessian matrix that we discussed in the video about Newton's method. The first derivative now corresponds to the gradient, the problem with Newton's method in nonlinear regression is that the Hessian matrix and its inverse are problematic to calculate. To solve this problem, the Gauss-Newton method instead approximates the Hessian. Remember that this is the sum of the squared residuals, and that these are the residuals. We can rewrite the equation like this, where R is the residuals. Note that the sum of the squared residuals can also be defined like this, where R represents a vector with the residuals. If you multiply the residual vector with its transpose, we will get the sum of the squared residuals. If you differentiate this function with respect to the parameters in the model with the chain rule, we will obtain the following equation. We can remove these two here because it will not affect the estimation of the parameters. Beta j represents the parameters in the model, which are k and y0 in our example. This part of the equation corresponds to the Jacobian matrix. In our example, we have eight data points and therefore eight residuals. This matrix therefore consists of eight rows and two columns because we like to estimate two parameters. For example, if k would be our first parameter, the first column of the Jacobian matrix will correspond to how the residuals change when we make a change in the parameter k. Just as we did in Newton's method, we will differentiate this equation with respect to beta j, so that we get the second derivative. We can do this by using the product rule, which will result in the following equation. Note that this term includes the second derivative, which is complicated to calculate as we discussed previously. The main difference between Newton's method and Gauss-Newton is that the Gauss-Newton method neglects this term, so that the second derivative is approximated by the following function. We can formulate this part as the transpose of the Jacobian matrix times the Jacobian matrix. Similarly, this part can be formulated as the transpose of the Jacobian matrix times the residual vector. Remember that we use the following updating rule in Newton's method. For Gauss-Newton, we simply plug in the approximation of the Hessian matrix, like this and for the gradient, like this.
The parameter values are therefore updated like this in every iteration in the Gauss-Newton method. This is the general equation for how Gauss-Newton updates the parameter values, where beta is a column vector with parameters that we like to estimate. For our simple example where we only estimate two parameters, the equation looks like this. The j's correspond to the Jacobian matrix. And this is the residuals based on the current values of k and y0. This is the Jacobian matrix for our example. Since we have data from eight different time points, this matrix will have eight rows because there will be eight residuals. The derivative of the residual function with respect to k is equal to this equation. And the derivative of the residual function with respect to y0 is equal to this equation. Suppose that we start with these two parameter values as our initial guesses. We can now calculate the Jacobian. We plug in the first time point and the initial guesses of k and y0 and do the math. We then plug in this value in the Jacobian matrix. Then we do the same for the second column. Then we do the same for the second row and plug in the numbers in the Jacobian matrix and so forth. Once we have calculated the Jacobian matrix, we can multiply with its transpose, which will result in the following matrix with rounded values. We then compute the inverse of this matrix, which results in the following matrix rounded to seven decimal places. Next, we calculate the residuals. When we plug in the current values of k and y0 and the absurd y values, this will result in a vector of eight residuals. If we now multiply this vector with the transpose of the Jacobian matrix, we'll get the following column vector. Finally, we compute the product of these two matrices, which results in this column vector. If we clean up a bit and plug in the current values of k and y0, and our column vector we just calculated, and do the math, then we have our new updated values of k and y0. Then we do the same calculations again with these new values of k and y0 and iterate like this. We now have a look at the simple R code to reproduce the calculations. As a reference, we here run the NLS function, which estimates the parameters k and y0 to these values. Then we define the maximum number of iterations and initialize the counter and the difference between the old and the new parameter values which is here simply set to an arbitrary number to make sure that we enter the loop. These are our initial guesses of the two parameters. Next, we define the function that is fitted to the data and the Jacobian matrix. We continue to iterate this piece of code until the difference between the old and updated values of the parameters is less than 0 0.000001. We here compute the Jacobian and the residuals based on the current values of the two parameters. Then we update the parameter values with a formula that we discussed earlier. If we run this code, we see that we get approximately the same estimated parameter values as the NLS function. Note that the Jacobian function in this case includes the derivatives we calculated earlier. But we can also define this function based on numerical derivatives like this. This was the end of this basic video about the Gauss-Newton method. Thanks for watching!